I will uh, introduce our first speaker, Lukasz Fischek. Uh, Lukasz is a member of the cabinet of Franz Timmermans, uh, who is the executive vice president of the European Commission that is responsible for the European Green Deal, its development and implementation. Uh, I mean, to the extent that uh, is within their competence. And in this team, Lukas works on sustainable food systems and the zero pollution ambition. And we are very pleased to have him make a first input today. So Lukas, the floor is yours. Thanks very much for the introduction and of course for uh, for having me um, in this workshop on this important topic. Uh, I will really look forward to the discussion. Um, uh, so I'll try to be very brief, but. I will take a few minutes to introduce a bit what we do in the European Commission with the strategy that we called uh, Farm to Fork, uh, which was adopted in um, in spring 2020 in the you know full peak of the first uh, lockdown. That was not uh, that was that didn't make things very very easy. Um, so uh, that's a strategy that's been in that's been in place uh, since then. Uh, I will tell you a little bit about what we're trying to do uh, with the strategy, but also I want to draw your attention to the fact that the strategy has an action plan, which lists about 28 different actions which are being rolled out by the Commission um, um, during the mandate, so between uh, the adoption of the Farm to Fork back in 2020 until the end of the mandate, which is going to come um in uh in in summer uh next year in summer 2024 so what is the what is the farm to fork strategy um about it really is supposed to be a major reform of the of the food system uh in europe and we also kind of hoping that at, and actively working towards that that this is going to create a blueprint for uh, or at least an inspiration for many parts of uh, of of the world. And the idea really is to make a transition of the food systems as a whole. So not just about it's not just about agriculture, um, or it's not just about you know changing diets uh, and habits, uh, but it really is about the transition of the entire uh, of the entire food system of the entire value chain towards one where all the food is sustainable and that's something that i would like to really emphasize uh, we have a pretty good experience in the in the european union in making food safe uh, um, this was basically triggered uh mainly by by the by the bse crisis uh in in the 90s and uh, we have overhauled our uh, our legislation and also the way we approach the way we approach food production mainly uh, in a way that you know food is now completely safe. Uh, you don't really have to think about it when you go shopping or when you eat out. Um, you kind of take it for take it for granted. Uh, what we're trying to do with farm to fork is pretty much exactly the same thing, which is that we're trying to make all food sustainable. And we know that food is not sustainable. Uh, we in our breakout room we were talking about food waste for example um i mean in the european union 20% of food is wasted uh that is about 88 million tons of uh of of food that, that, that that's a, it's a staggering amount uh i mean for your imagination uh if food uh, if food waste was a uh, was a was a country it would be the third biggest emitter of greenhouse gas emissions um, in in the world but it is not just about uh it is not just about emissions agriculture is also uh one of the major drivers of biodiversity loss it is also one of the major drivers of uh of soil depletion in the european union we 60 to 70 percent of soils are in unhealthy uh condition um and and so we're trying to you know we're trying to fix uh we're trying to fix all of this uh, the farm to fork strategy has a few has a few principles. Uh, the very first principle is the one that I have already uh, mentioned, which is that the transition has to happen uh, along the entire food chain. So there are a number of actions uh, that we have put forward. Some of them have already been adopted by the Commission as proposals. Um, some of them uh, are still yet to come, uh, and I will we'll tell you a bit more about them as well. 
One of the examples that has already been done, but not completed, because it's still in the hands of uh, the European Parliament and of the Council, is uh, putting into place uh, a target which says that by 2030, we would like to reduce the use and the risk of chemical pesticides by, uh, by 50%. And the reason why we, why, why science tells us that this is necessary is because we need to stop uh, we need to stop the biodiversity loss. We need to stop uh, the fact that at the moment, one million species are at the risk of uh, extinction. Uh, of course, the use and the overuse of chemical pesticides and the underuse of uh, the alternatives, but also the underuse of knowledge that can address this, this problem um, is, um, is, is really at the heart of, um, of, this, of this initiative. Uh, we also trying to uh, we what, what we said in the farm to fork strategy. What the farm to fork strategy says as well is that we need to reduce by fifty percent uh, the the loss of nutrients. Uh, our natural environment is hugely polluted by uh, by by fertilizers, uh, be it synthetic fertilizers, be it um, organic fertilizers, and I'm talking about uh, mainly about about manure. Uh, that has to change, not just because it is terrible for the natural environment, uh, it's also terrible for us um, as, as humankind. Uh, we breathe all kinds of things uh, that we would uh, rather not breathe in, that we would rather not inhale. I will not go into detail uh, on that. But there's also a huge economic case. Uh, if you look at the price of fertilizers, at the moment, uh, which is uh, uh, which is uh, you know extreme uh, due to the prices of energy, uh, which is extreme due to the uh, Russian war um, and uh, and the price of gas, uh, there it clearly is a scope for reducing our uh, um, uh, for reducing the losses uh, that are um, that are quite common in uh, in the in the fields. Um, as I said, it is not just about uh, it's not it is not just about farmers. We also are uh, targeting the the middle part of the chain. Uh, we have we have devised something that is called the EU Code, Code of Conduct for Responsible uh, Business and Marketing Practices. And in fact, most of the big, but also a lot of the small companies and their associations have signed up to this Code of Conduct. And this is a space where. Uh, where where the companies can pledge their commitments to sustainability, be it about emissions, be it about packaging, for example, being about food waste, which we have already talked about, um, uh, be, be it also about improving health uh, of or, or the nutritional values of the products that they supply uh, to the market. Uh, last and certainly not least, it is also about uh, consumers. Um, and you know, I want to be very um, uh, I want to be very, very clear on this. Uh, you can ask farmers to produce in the most um, sustainable way, but unless consumers pull their weight in the system, uh, it is not going to happen. It is not going to. It is not going to work. I've already mentioned food waste. Uh, I've mentioned the figures of twenty percent, which equals eighty-eight million tons of food. Uh, but it is also about um, the composition of the of the diet uh, uh, we all, all well probably not all of us here on this on this call but as a society we over consume uh, animal protein uh, and we under consume uh, plants and and, and plant-based protein in consequence uh, what this means is that actually 65% uh, of agricultural land, feeds animals rather than people. I mean, of course, you can make an argument that uh, animals then feed people, but then you can also question the whole um, uh, 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 the whole rationale of such a model uh, where, you, where we are kind of over-dependent on, on, uh, on, on feeding animals. I'll give you another figure, which I think is quite interesting and quite telling. In fact, two thirds of all cereals in the EU are fed to animals. Uh, rather than you know put into bread uh, and um, and other products for 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 human consumption, 
And this is, you know, like I'm not saying this to certainly not to blame farmers because they will produce what the market is demanding. Uh, this is about us. This is about how we stimulate um, the consumption. Uh, so, um, and there's only very little, um, uh, there's only very little that, that you know, regulation can do about this. Uh, we're not in the business of telling people or what to eat or what not to eat. Uh, but we are in the business of informing consumers of the choices that they make and of the consequences that they have on uh, on the natural environment and on the on the climate. The second principle uh, that is very related to the first one that the farm to fork uh, puts forward is that you know the change, the transition not only has to happen along the entire food chain, but it also has to happen in the depth of the entire society. So what I'm trying to say is that, uh, you know, one thing is regulation. Um, one thing is the regulatory framework that the commission can, can come up with. Uh, the other thing is what uh, national governments can do, what regions can do, but also what cities and even individual entities, institutions, but also citizens can do. So the transition really depends a lot also on um, things like, you know, pub public procurement, I mean, on the food that is eaten in canteens, uh, that is eaten in hospitals. Uh, and those who manage those, um, those, those public procurements can take a decision and actually bring sustainable foods uh, to consumers uh, and giving them, and give them, uh, give them this choice. It's been working quite well in many cities around uh, around Europe. Uh, some of the great examples are well, there's a lot of people from from Germany here. Some of the good examples are from Frankfurt, for example. Uh, another one that um, that that is quite famous is the city of Copenhagen, which I think uh, where where um, a huge percentage of the canteens. I'm kind of shy to say 100 percent, but that's the figure that is stuck in my mind. 100 percent of the canteens actually do serve organic. Uh, organic uh, food and the third uh, and the third um, uh, the third point that I would like to make uh, the third principle is that um, this transition is not going to happen without a business case um, you know no one is going to do this because of philanthropic reasons uh, because they want to save the planet and then by the way you know the planet doesn't really need saving it's perfectly capable of saving itself uh, it is the humanity that needs saving from itself. Uh, so uh, the business case needs to be there, and I'm quite optimistic about the fact that uh, that that you know there's a change in uh, that there is not there is not uh, uh, just a wind of change, but there is uh, a, a pretty big, powerful tornado of change happening in uh, in the in the business sector. Um, you see that more and more companies are actually signing up to climate neutrality, which again is not just um, a, a, you know a wish uh, or a desire. It is a legal obligation for all member states to actually contribute to climate neutrality. Uh, and as they sign up to climate neutrality, this obligation has to sift down through the entire value chain, uh, which means that uh, which means that also uh, agriculture, where you know abating emissions is 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 extremely hard close to impossible you can't put an electric engine into a cow uh, but they are signing up to this which means that you know there are investments going into agriculture there are investments going into um into improving um uh, the the carbon footprint of agriculture uh, and i also wish that there were more investments going into the biodiversity side of uh of all of this um so uh as long as all these principles uh, come to come together, and this is really what we're trying to do with all our legal proposals. Uh, then, then the transition is 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 going to is going to happen. It is not going to happen overnight. Uh, although, to be very honest with you, it is happening uh, faster than I thought um, in 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 real life. But it is still going to take uh, it is still going to take quite some time. Uh, it will be in time for you know when uh, you are sitting in my office uh, or in another office uh, uh, that the that that the transition that we're trying to put into place now 
will really start yielding um, the, 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 the real um, results. I will leave it at that, um, and I really look forward to the discussion. Great. Thank you very much, Lucas, for this uh, input.